You're listening to the Bearded Theologians podcast, hosted by Zach Bechtold and Matt Franks. If you'd like to learn more about the Bearded Theologians, you can go online at beardedtheologians.com, where we have past podcasts, blogs, and a couple of items for sale. So check us out, beardedtheologians.com. Thank you for listening, and enjoy this week's show. You're listening to the Bearded Theologians podcast, hosted by Matt Franks. And Zach Bechtold. So uh, this week, as we get back to our normal swing of things of how we're doing things, um, Zach's still trying to find his office. Apparently, it exists somewhere <laughs> in um, the netherworld of Montana. Um, to be fair, but... I'm still on renewal leave, so I'm trying to stay away. <laughs> <laughs> Try All, not right. To All right, I'll give you that one. Um, but uh, with that in mind, uh, we you know we still want to try to keep recording as we always have. And um, today, as we were digging around trying to kick around some ideas. Um, the uh, lectionary text this week of the Gospel of Luke, chapter 11, 1 through 13, bubbled up as the best option for us today. Um, <laughs> uh, so with that in mind, Zach, um, you know, what, what are some thoughts and minds that come to you? Sure. Uh, I'll do as I always do um, and, and read the passage for us. Um, Luke, chapter 11, 1 through 13, Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of the disciples said, Lord, teach us to pray just as John taught his disciples. Jesus told them, when you pray, say, Father, uphold the holiness of your name. Bring in your kingdom. Give us the bread we need for today. Forgive, forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who has wronged us and do not lead us into temptation. He said to them, imagine that one of you has a friend and you go to that friend in the middle of the night. Imagine saying, friend, loan me three loaves of bread because of friend, because a friend of mine on a journey has arrived and I have nothing to set before him. Imagine further that he answers from within the house. Don't bother me. The door is already locked and my children are already in bed. I can't get up to give you anything. I assure you, even if he wouldn't get up and help because of his friendship, he will get up and give his friend whatever he needs because of his friend's brashness. And I tell you, Ask and you will receive, seek and you will find, knock and the door will open to you. Everyone who asks receives and whoever seeks finds. To everyone who knocks, the door is open. Which father among you would give a snake to your child if the child asked for a fish? If a child asked for an egg, what father would give the child a scorpion? If you who are evil know how to give good gifts, to your children, how much more will the heavenly Father give to the Holy give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? That's a lot. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot to pull out of this. Uh, I guess, really, Matt, as you you take all of that in, what what jumped out to you? I'm going to say first because I know there was a lot that jumped out. Um, you know, um. Luke has an interesting ta uh, take on the Lord's Prayer, uh, at least the way that the common English translates it. Mm -hmm. um, I love that line, bring in your kingdom. Like, I don't know yeah. why, but I really do. Um, I think that's the first thing. Um, you know, the, the whole idea of, um, I look at this as an attitude of prayer and what are you asking for and like what, uh, should one respect expect to receive uh, when asking in prayer? And you know, the, you're right. There is so much here. It's almost overload uh, for me <laughs> it uh, is. today. There, there's probably a three podcasts we could do on uh, this. Thing. I mean, we could we could spend you know at least three weeks, if not four, um, mm -hmm. on this. Um, <laughs> just the way you you <laughs> the way you kind of kind of. <laughs> that last little section there of 11 and 13 of you, you uh, um, you know, um, I, I, I think that, you know, to kind of think about it, if, if I were preaching about this, I would definitely, um, I think the one thing I would say, you know, what are you praying for and who, whom are you praying to? Um, and, and, and being centered, um, in God, um, is definitely, um, you know, part of that, uh, Oh, I'm still, there's a lot here. <laughs> That's right. There's a lot to chew on. I, I think for me, there's three, if I were preaching it like a series, I'd pull three sections out here. Um, 
the, the first is the request, you know, hey, Jesus, teach us to pray just as John taught his disciples to pray. Hey, Jesus, do that thing that John does, uh, which I find a fascinating request. Um, and like you said, the way that the, the common English here reads, um, it, it's a really interesting interpretation. Um, I, I really, I, I don't know, I like it. Um, it reads, well, give us the bread we need for today. Um, forgive our sins as we have also forgive everyone else who has wronged us. Um, I like that. But I also like the, the following, uh, just the rest of it, 5 through 13, that not only does Jesus teach them, here's the things you say, but here's also the things you do. Um, for me, this reads kind of these parables that follow behind it or these lessons that follow behind it. If a friend um, comes in the middle of the night asking for bread, what do you do? Um, you know, if you're going to pray this, you follow it for me, it's, you follow it up with action. Uh, you follow it up to give space to not only hear, but to do, uh, in, in these moments in Jesus is teaching them, uh, to pray in a way that one, you know, we get down in here and we, we hear the, uh, ask and you shall receive, seek and you will find, knock and the door will open. We hear all of that. And, you know, we just, I don't know, seems like yesterday, but like six months ago, we came off a series of, of cherry picking. And, and this is definitely one of those, if you feel just ask, right? Um, that's not what Jesus is saying. Jesus is saying, if you're going to pray like this, if you're going to ask, then there's things to do. Um, that that's all part of prayer. And yes, the <laughs> which father among you would give a snake to your child if they ask for a fish makes me giggle uh because just because i could like see because <laughs> i was like i could see you doing that it's a dad um, move <laughs> <laughs> yes it totally is it's a solid dad move and, um but, but yeah i i think there's some fascinating things that we forget um that when we pray the lord's prayer there's things that follow it uh there was teaching that followed it there was I don't want to use the word expectation because I don't think that's right. But but there were there were lessons that followed that go along with the teaching of here's how you pray. Um, there's action involved. Well, and I think it's calling. Like I mean, I love how in the beginning of the story you see Jesus. You know, he was praying. But and and unlike a lot of other times in the Gospels, they didn't interrupt Jesus. They allowed Jesus to finish, and then they were uh -huh. like, you know you know, Lord, teach us to pray, you know, just as John taught his disciples to pray. And, and part of me, you know, like you, like, like, that's just a funny, you know, uh, request <laughs> of, of our Lord, and, of our Lord and Savior, uh, you know, uh, once again, like, kind of, do you not realize what happens with John? <laughs> like, you know, like, <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, you know, um, and even Jesus, you know, definitely meets uh, his, his fate as well. Um, and I think that when we think about, I always say this when, when talking about the Lord's prayers is that sometimes we pray it and we're not putting our whole selves into it. Um, mm -hmm. And, and when we pray that prayer, we should pray it as though it's the last prayer we pray and pray it as the most earnest prayer that we can pray. And, and even in worship, you know um, I mean, you and I both know how that go, how that prayer goes off in worship Um and dear Lord, if we ever removed it because our, our disciples weren't being as faithful as they should be praying it, you know, I mean, right. could you imagine if you removed the Lord's prayer, what would happen? Um, right. You know, well, and, you know, one of my, one of my favorite places to, to have the Lord's prayer is in, I mean, I do a lot of non uh, air quotes, non-religious funerals, right? People who just, they don't have a pastor, they don't have a church. It's not their thing, but they want, it's often the Lord's prayer that they want um even when they're not church people and i i love starting that prayer and and backing away the best i can to let their voices come through because it, for them they're not praying it every week in a lot of yeah. in a lot of spaces and so it it reverberates with that faithfulness and that hopefulness and that comfort that we often find in it even in a worship service but it, without the routineness of it I think it's more the, a little it's a little more spontaneous i think one of the coolest experiences i ever had with the lord's prayer was at my grandfather's my step-grandfather's funeral 
when the Presbyterian minister, when she said, I know there are people of other faiths here. Um, let us pray the Lord's prayer as you know it. And so like, it was really cool to hear, you know, debts and debtors, uh, you know, trespasser sins, you know, the, the, that kind of language and, and even having the Catholic stop at the Catholic stop and, uh, and, um, you know, just how it was prayed. It was such a beautiful moment. Now I will say this, that's not something my grandfather would have really cared for. He was a strict Presbyterian. And so like that doesn't definitely wasn't something that was really him. It's probably more me than it is him. Um, but it was something that struck me. Um, and, and even now when I lead funerals and I say that, and I say, let's pray the Lord's prayer as we know it and, you know, try to create a space for that, for those people who, um, are used to it in a, in a certain way. And, um, Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I remember my first appointment, that was a conversation we had because we had some EUB people there were debts and debtors. It's just what they prayed. Um, and even though they'd been Methodist for a very long time, you know, they were still clinging to that EUB, sure. you know, um, prayer. And I think that that's, you know, honoring those things and remembering those things is important. And it also becomes a really good teaching moment for a congregation to understand that there's more to this prayer than just what we know or what we pray right. on Sunday morning. Um, what we memorized, right? Yeah. Um, or in my case, sometimes I always forget a line or two, even when it's standing in front oh, of me God. on the screen. Always um, written down. <laughs> well, and, and maybe that's the thing with this, right? Is As we read back through something, you know, scripture like this that is or isn't familiar, right? Or is and or does and doesn't have tradition that, that maybe burden it, uh, that come along with it is to, to remember that there's more um, and there's there's an openness and vibrance to it when we, when we remember that, right? Uh, when we remember the question that's asked and the stories that follow. Yeah, and I think, you know, I, I think if, you know, the idea here, at least the, the thesis here is how to pray. And um, I think what Jesus is getting at is to pray seriously. Um, yeah. And to be honest and open. Um, and so I think that that's a great place to land for today as you pray, you know. Um, you know, I think one thing too, I, you know, I think of the Matthew text, the Matthew 6 text of how you pray, you know, go, you know, you don't have to be showy like the actors are. And, mm-hmm. you know, I think, uh, I don't know about you, but when I attend public gatherings, I, I just despise when you can tell people are showing off. I mean, and you can tell, um, mm-hmm. you know, um, I'm always one of short and sweet and let's, let's get, let's get going. Um, but yep. you know, short sweet, let's go to eat. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, and so I, I think praying earnestly is, is important, um, without being too showy. I think that that's a great place to land for us today. And you know, I want to encourage you that if you want to continue to have conversations with us, you can do that through the social medias, um, wherever you, or wherever you listen to the podcast and you can find all that at beardedtheologians.com. And so for the Bearded Theologians, I'm Matt Franks. Uh, I'm Zach Bechtel. Thanks for checking us out. I want you to subscribe and like this video and put that thumbs, push that thumbs up. Thank you for listening to the Bearded Theologians podcast. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share on all social media outlets. You can check out old episodes and more information at beardedtheologians.com. Thanks for checking us out.